You all know by now that since concrete shrinks when it cures, it cracks. It's designed, wall systems like this are designed to accommodate those cracks. And not just to accommodate them, but to try to force the wall, the, con the system, this system to crack where we want it to crack so that it maintains the strength that it has to have to do the work it has to do. You remember that we carefully located and formed these control joints to force the wall to crack right here. Well, guess what? They're really working. There are cracks in the back of the inside corner. This one runs out a little bit at every one of these control joints, except the top one where the wall is short and apparently it didn't need to. And the cracks are real cracks. They have relieved a lot of shrinkage and they're doing their job. But I made a mistake. It was a mistake that was driven kind of by time. A lot of construction mistakes are driven by either time or budget. And this mistake was driven by time. Now, in fairness to me, it was not drawn, and the extra control joints that I wish I would have put in were not on the plans. I put the joints in according to plan, except I should have put a couple in this corner. So I've got this reveal. I mean, this looks nice, right? It looks like there's a cap sitting on this wall. I should have run this right down vertically down the outside of this corner to create a construction, a control joint on each side of this corner that would have made it look like a nice column standing here. It would have made real good sense to do that, but I didn't. And so since an inside corner concentrates forces and this was shrinking in two directions, an initial settlement was pushing down on the entire wall system, it cracked. A pretty good crack. It runs back into the corner and right down here. So it did a very similar thing over on this other side. We've got a crack over more in the middle of this panel that runs back, sort of accommodating the settlement over here, the rigid corner here. But I wish, I wish I would have run a construction control joint down each one of these corners. If it wouldn't have solved it, it sure would have minimized it. Now, is this a problem? Only to my pride, because we've checked and rechecked. We've put a micrometer on these cracks. We've checked for plumb. We've checked it now for a year and a half, and the wall is bulletproof strong. It's, it's a very obedient wall. It's doing exactly what we have asked it to do, but I wish I would have done that. Now, there's another alternative that would have taken way more time that would have changed this somewhat, and that is if I would have formed this corner in a radius if I would have softened this corner so all the forces would not have had to be relieved right here, I probably would have gotten two or three cracks at intermittent places scattered around the radius. Would that have been better? No difference. The other mistake that was made that you may have already recognized is that I had to restack these rocks. You see they're at a shallower angle. Well, because of a miscommunication, about a three-way miscommunication, it became obvious that I needed to reduce the slope the pitch on those rocks from where it was, and it was beautiful. I mean, Brian and the boys did a beautiful job. I needed to lay them back, two reasons. Reduce the load on the wall and reduce the fall hazard that a lot of you pointed out that would have been part of living here in a house right on the edge of a, what, about a 18 foot cliff. So we just bit the bullet. At the time, I just, I was a little freaked out because in laying the slope back, I had to give up about six feet of lot size in both directions. And I already knew that the lot was tight. The house that was drawn, it wasn't fully designed, but the house was drawn and I thought, great, the house is not gonna fit. I've shown the whole world this house and it's not gonna fit. But actually, it does fit. It fits just fine. And the people won't be living on the edge of a precipice. And it doesn't look quite so much like Helm's Deep as you're driving up the street. So all in all, even though at the time it gave me some real heartburn for about three weeks, we're through that. It worked out fine. I brought Brian and the boys back in. They pulled the rock back. We recompacted the fill, cut it to a new slope, put fresh filter fabric in there and put the rocks back and it's working great. The house fits. We're moving forward. In the rear view mirror, yeah, this wall was a lot of work, but this wall developed this lot in the best way it can be developed. It maximized the buildable footprint. If we wouldn't have put this wall in and would have simply retained and covered the slope in the same way that my neighbor has tied in and covered his back slope, our buildable space would have been much less. But as it is, we've got this hybrid, which I like, of concrete and stone. We have a site that is fully contained, ready to build on. I think it's a win. I am ready, I am confident, and I am really frankly excited to finally be able to put a carpenter hat on and do some carpenter work instead of just strictly excavation and moving boulders around because as 
much as I like it, the sooner I get away from the concrete, I like it more. The cost associated with this wall, whether building it or replacing the rock, pulling it back and putting it, and putting it back in place at the flatter slope is made available to those that are supporting us either on Patreon or our website. And please know this, you are the people that are making this project happen. Your support is vital to what we've been doing and what we hope to keep doing. So it's time to build. Thanks for watching.